So in the early 2000s, the new tuner market was taking over the automotive scene and you had movies like Fast and Furious just crushing the box office and you had the aftermarket support was just inundating the SEMA show with all the products that they were coming out with to support the new sport compact scene. And the manufacturers were taking notice as well and decided to offer their own variations of their Econo box cars and make the more sporty tuner versions to appeal to the masses for those that were jumping in on this market. And Dodge was no exception to that. And they decided to take their base neon and convert it to an evil twin known as the SRT4. And the SRT4 was made from 2003 to 2005. The base Dodge Neon had a two liter single overhead cam engine that didn't produce a lot of power. It wasn't a super fast car or anything like that. But the SRT4 Dodge decided to go and they replaced the front bumper with a more aggressive styling with a hood scoop on it as well, put a rear wing on the back, put a really loud exhaust system with a really deep throaty exhaust note and replaced that anemic two liter four cylinder with a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine that made 215 horsepower in 2003. The car was labeled as the fastest car for under $20,000. Dodge marketed the car at $19,995 in 2003, and it definitely lived up to that name. The 2003 car was running a low 14 quarter mile out of the box and was just really a force to be reckoned with back in the early 2000s. I, at the time, you were having your, your SS Camaros with V8s running a low 13. So having a four cylinder running just a second slower in the quarter mile was absolutely unheard of at the time and was really well done on Dodge's part. Now in 2004, Dodge decided they wanted to up that power a little bit and went ahead and retuned the car, put new injectors in it and bumped that horsepower up from 215 to 230 horsepower. They also added a limited slip differential and they minimized torque steer with the front engine car, with a front wheel drive car, by putting equal length half shafts in as well. Now if you thought you could get an automatic with one of these cars, you'd have to guess again because they only came with a five-speed manual transaxle. So in addition to the horsepower increase from 2003 to 2004, there were a couple other changes as well. In 2003, they came with Michelin tires and then in 2004, they changed over to BFG tires. And then the last change that they did between 2003 and 2004 was they replaced the stock pedals with a more racy style pedal assembly. So the new aggressive styling of the front end of the SRT4, you got these huge openings in the front mouth that allowed extra air to flow through the intercooler that the Chrysler installed from the factory. Now, of course, it's hard to see, but this one also has the Turbo Toys intercooler sprayers on it that are used for drag racing. So in addition to those, you also got these new fog lights and then if you were ever curious of what type of engine it has, it says right on the scoop, 2.4 liter turbo. Now a very popular modification done on these SRT4s is adding these eyelids to make the front end look even more aggressive. All right, so a couple of fun facts about the Dodge SRT4 is they did add this wing on the back and a lot of people think it's just a styling cube, but in actuality, this wing is fully functional. It produces about 100 pounds of downforce at above 120 miles an hour. Now it may not sound a lot compared to now with the, the modern ACR Vipers running close to 2,000 pounds of downforce on their ACR E wings, but still for back in 2003 having functional aero was a big deal. 
Another fun fact that came out, when this car was brand new, it was the second fastest car in Dodge's lineup, second only to the Dodge Viper. Now this car, the taillights have been replaced. The new taillights on here are actually from Mopar Performance. They were called the Retro 3D style taillights. So SRT stands for Street and Racing Technology, and the four designate that it's a four cylinder engine. So whenever you see an early SRT vehicle and you see the badges on the back, that number on the back, that's gonna designate how many cylinders the engine has. So whether it's an SRT4, six, eight, or 10 in the case of the Viper and the Ram truck. All right, so these are the stock wheels that came on the SRT4. Now I've gone ahead and upgraded the brakes on this one with StopTech rotors, and as well as replaced the amber turn signal lenses on the front with clear ones and added these new Mopar decals. All right, now finding an SRT4 nowadays that's got a stock engine compartment or stock in general is really hard to do. Most of them over the years have been abused and just totally destroyed. This one is in pretty stock condition under here, except for the fact it's got the Mopar Performance strut tower brace added, as well as some Torx Solution solid motor mounts. This car is also equipped with a Mopar Stage 2 turbo kit with a turbo toys option, and it adds a, a good amount of performance to it, and the nice thing was it was from Mopar, and so therefore it was factory supported. This RT4 is definitely a lot more modified than a stock one is, and this one has had the valve cover painted, the fuel injector rail covered, painted, Mopar Performance strut tower brace installed, Mopar Performance cold air intake, MSD plug wires, an HKS blow off valve, and a few other items as well have been updated on this car. All right, so the interior on the SRT4 got a bunch of upgrades as well over the standard Neon. The biggest difference, of course, are gonna be the seats. The seats in the SRT4 are based on the design out of the Dodge Viper. And then, of course, being only available in a five-speed, they upgraded the shifter. This one's been upgraded as well to a Hurst short throw shifter. And then in addition to those upgrades, they added a boost gauge on the dash as well as upgraded the instrument cluster that labeled as SRT4 with 160 mile an hour speedometer. All right, so while the SRT4 did not have very many options, it did have a few. And the biggest noticeable difference for the option would be the side curtain airbags. Because if you got the side curtain airbag option like this ACR did, you lost the Viper style bucket seats and got these low back bucket seats out of the base Neon RT. Now this one also has had the Mopar Performance short throw shifter installed, which is very similar in appearance to the stock shifter. The throw is just shorter. The other options for the SRT4 included a six disc CD changer with a kicker subwoofer in, mounted in the trunk. This ACR is equipped with both of those, and as well as having the Turbo Toys option, gives you an additional set of buttons to play with on this dash, including a high octane mode and a boost adjusting knob, as well as an intercooler sprayer to keep those air temps down while you're drag racing. All right, so recently Doug DeMiro had done a video on the SRT4, and overall it's pretty thorough, but I gotta say, he missed something. When he was sitting in the back seat of these cars, he had mentioned that there's no cup holder back here. Well, contrary to that belief, there really is a cup holder back here. It's just hidden. Let me demonstrate. It's actually located in the lid to the center console to the front. Now, for the driver, it's not really the most practical cup holder because if they rest their elbow on the console, now it's gonna be a little more painful not having the padded lid there. But there is in fact a cup holder in the back seat. All right, so for the last year of production of the SRT4 2005, Dodge decided they'd go out with a bang and offer a special, even more track aggressive style SRT4, and that's the ACR package. And this car being an orange blast is one of only 211 ACR SRT4s produced. The grand total of ACRs produced in 2005 was 1175. Now, for the SRT4 ACR package, there were a few additions that they had made. One of them was they replaced the stock 17 inch wheels with a 16 inch BBS wheel that was also slightly wider. You can also identify the ACRs with the ACR badges on the door. And one of the big things that they did with on the ACR was upgrade the suspension. So they replaced the stock struts with an adjustable Takiko strut and they also increased the size of the sway bars. So from there, the other change that they made was on the interior, they took the stock Viper style seats, put harness cutouts in them, and stitched ACR into the headrest. All right, let's take this thing out. So another fun fact about the SRT4 is each year of production had its 
own unique color that was a one year only color. So for 2003, that color was solar yellow. Now, there's a slight caveat on here. There were a couple of cars in 2004 produced in solar yellow, but for the most part, it was only a 2003 color. For 2004, that one year only color was electric blue, which is the color that this one is. Now, 2005 got two additional colors. It got orange blast, which is the color of my dad's ACR, and it got stone white. Now, for 2005, they also offered a commemorative edition, which was a stone white car with blue racing stripes. Now, they also offered a stone white and blue racing stripe commemorative edition car for both the Viper and Ram SRT10 in 2005. So when they announced the Dodge SRT4 in 2002, I knew I had to have one. I was just graduated high school and was in the market for an economy car to be driving back and forth to college. And I, same time, wanted a performance car. It's just what I do. All this stuff is all about performance. And so the SRT4 fit that bill. I mean, I was already looking at the base RT Neon. I just wish it had more power. Um, and ideally I wanted it to be a two-door, but Dodge quit making two-door Neons at that point. And so when it came out, they had 2003 came out and the solar yellow appealed to me, but I really wanted a blue car. Just like all of my other cars, they're always blue. And so when they announced that the electric blue was coming out for 2004, I'd, I was sold. I was like, all right, I have to buy one. And so I went to a couple dealerships. Some dealerships didn't know anything about the SRT4, which was really unfortunate. And uh, finally I found one, uh, Santa Rosa Dodge, and went in and sure enough, they're like, yeah, we can get you one. Um, and so we went ahead and spent probably half of a day negotiating the deal. Um, but we were able to agree on the price and stuff and the car came a week later. Now what was really interesting was when the car, when I bought the car, I actually hadn't seen the electric blue color in person. I would seen a couple of pictures online so I had an idea, but it really wasn't a, an accurate representation of what that color really was. And so, but I bought it anyways because it was a blue SRT4, so I was gonna buy it. And so it showed up a week later and we went down to the dealership and the car was gorgeous. I mean, it was everything I could have ever imagined and I just loved that car. And I drove the wheels off of it and it was an amazing experience. I had so much fun with that car, driving it back and forth to school. Uh, but unfortunately, as luck would have it, one day I was in a nasty snow uh, rainstorm coming back from class and I had a rear tire blow out and I lost control of the car and totaled it. So luckily I was okay, but the car was not and uh, I had to start and find another car because I was still commuting for school. So luck would have it that uh, there was a SRT4 in town and uh, I was in Reading at the time and uh, it was a commemorative edition SRT4 and it was beautiful. And it only had like 3000 miles on it and it was actually serial number one of the limited production commemorative edition SRT4's built. So I bought the car and drove it for a while and finished up school. Unfortunately, uh, as you, if you've seen my video on ones that got away, you'll know that I did sell that car because of uh, moving to the Bay Area and not needing the added expense of a car payment. So I sold it and uh, wanted another one ever since. So about four years ago, I really started getting the itch for another SRT4 and I started looking. And I made the decision that I was gonna buy another electric blue one, just like my first one. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these cars have been used and abused over the years and wrecked and totaled and parted out and all sorts of stuff. So finding a clean example of an electric blue SRT4, which was a one year only color, and then finding one option the way mine was originally, it was like finding a needle in the haystack. I mean, it literally took a year for me to find this SRT4. And I was looking all over the country. I mean, there was nowhere I wouldn't look for a car. And this one just happened to pop up one day at a used car lot in Modesto, which is about an hour from where I live. And so I lucked out and was able to get this one. I've had it now for about three years and put over 50,000 miles on it and just 
love it. I mean, every time I get in behind the wheel of this car, I just feel like that college kid again, cruising around in a little sport compact. Of course, this one's a lot more modified than either of my other two were because I've done a lot more work to this one and it's, it's just a blast to drive. I, and I, I can't emphasize how much fun it is to drive this car, take it up in the mountains, hit the twisties, and just really have a good time. I, and with the, the suspension upgrades I've done with the Coney adjustable struts and the Mopar springs and poly bushings and Daryl Cox racing lower control arms, I, and this thing handles really, really well, despite the fact that it's an upgraded neon and I'll even take this on rally events and with my supercar friends and stuff and it hangs just fine with all of them uh, of course I am if we were to really push it at the track or whatever they would destroy me but for the stuff that we do up in the mountains just enjoying the drive this does really really well and I know some people are gonna hate me for saying this, but I actually enjoy driving this sometimes a little more than driving my Viper. Um, it's just so much fun. So plans that I've got for this one in the future, I mean, right now it's doing really well, but I'm planning on building another engine for it. If you've watched a lot of my other videos, you'll notice I've got uh, another engine sitting on a stand right next to where I'm sitting. Uh, that's another one of these engines. And I plan on doing a full forged internal build and put a big turbo on it. Now, I'm probably not gonna go as extreme on the build as I'd originally intended. Uh, my original thought was to make like six, 700 horsepower and run a 10 second quarter mile. Um, but doing further research on it, uh, if I were to go that extreme on the build, there, some of the fun factor and drivability on the street goes away. And that's definitely not something I wanna do because at the end of the day, while I will probably take this to the drag strip, 90% of the time it's going to be spent either on the street or on a road course and so going so far extreme on the horsepower and getting this into the 10 second quarter mile may not be the most practical uh, decision to make but we'll still go with a bigger turbo whether it be a modified stage 3 Mopar turbo or an aftermarket turbo kit time will tell on that uh, but at the end of the day we'll get this car down into probably run it into a mid to low 11 quarter mile which is still plenty fast for this little car all right and so that's an overview of the srt4 neon i hope you've enjoyed this video because i definitely had a great time making it uh, like i've said this is one of my favorite cars I, and i've owned three of them uh, if you have any thoughts i definitely like to hear your thoughts on these cars and uh, go ahead and put those in the uh, comment section down below i read all of your comments and as always, if you enjoy this video, go ahead and smash that like button, give us a thumbs up. Uh, so that way YouTube uh, keeps uh, getting our video out there for more and more people to see. And as always, if you wanna see more of my videos and be kept up to date of the uploads that I do, go ahead and smash that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell as well. So that way YouTube will notify you of all my videos in the future. And as always, I will see you the next video.